Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Today I'm so much inspired because of what is happening all over here. What I mean is we have the eggs of our cockatiels, we have many chicks of our African lovebirds and even the parakeets and we also have produced plenty of this quality goldfish imported lines from Thailand and we were able also to develop a good system on how to grow out our fish in the concrete tank. For this video, allow me to share with you what is happening here. We would like to tell you about the live food that we are culturing, which is the tubifex worm. And then another is, we would like to tell you something about the filter media that's so natural that we use here in our big tanks. And number three, we're gonna show you our empty tank that is prepared for our Japanese koi. And we have bred so much of this fish and we are able now to you know, see these different types of Japanese koi babies that are actually very promising because in the future I can see beautiful koi, quality ones, that will be swimming here all over. I mean, yes, uh, I'm dreaming of a big farm. Actually, what we're doing here is just to get some learnings, processes, even techniques on how to go about a bigger farm which will have so many of these types of animals. And today, let me tell you about the specifics of what I am talking about. The success of your breeding of this tropical fish depends also on your ability to develop or culture your own food, like this live food that I am talking about. And if you will see down here, I have separated some worms in order for us to feed now as breakfast for our our greater fish and you will see here that we have this very live and very active worm we just got this worm down under you will see my my system here I provided with a submersible pump and then it's splashing 24 7 Right here is the filter bucket that's filled with stones and filled with filter media. Of course, we have this uh, other media like this uh, charcoal and everything. Stones, more stones, and even this uh, hornwort there inside. Today, this worm should be given as breakfast to our breeder fish. For the small fish, we actually put these bigger ones in the net so that the babies can just go out of the net and settle right here in this uh, pail that we utilize for this, you will see here. These are the babies of our tubifex worm. So the process is we collect and then put them inside the net and then we will allow the babies to get out of the net and it's here. Uh, see this one these are the babies that you can see a very tiny worm right here you see that and they are best food for our baby goldfish and as what i have said it's really very important for us to be able to culture this one in order for us to fast track the production of our fish because if this will be given to the fry at 10 days old then the fry will easily grow mature and we can transfer them to the mud pond and even to the bigger tanks intended for the grow out. So I will demonstrate to you how we're gonna fit this one. Of course, we need this very much. I will not use the big worms, but I will use the small worms instead. So we already have starved the worms before they are gonna be fed to our fish. And this is very important, you have to starve them for 3-4 days 
it's more safer if you're gonna starve them for a longer period of time. So guys, we have here this worm and then we will give this to our fry for breakfast. Actually, I have two tanks here that is filled with this fry of goldfish. So I'm feeding now. You will see that they're really waiting for this and they're here coming over just to eat this very delicious worm. And this fish is just 10 days old from hatch. And these are already the products of our effort in breeding this uh, jumbo lines and imported lines of fish. And you can wait this one because we're gonna sell good quality fish in the market. Maybe around November, December, we're gonna be able, I'm very positive about this, we're gonna be able to sell to the public, to the market, this quality fish that are really very adorable to watch inside in this aquarium. This is it. They are actually now eating and I'm so happy to look at them very busy eating their breakfast. The cycle is we have to breed and we use this tank for our spawning tank and then after 10 days or maybe 15 days, we will throw them in the bigger pond, which is the growing out tank. And in our growing tank, there are actually steps to be strictly followed in order for us to be able to grow fast our fish. And I would like to tour you over there where we can see the first batch of our breeding and they're already big. So come on, let's go over there. So this is our growing out tank. This is a big tank. We have this uh, four feet in depth. This is actually eight meters. And then the width is two meters. And this can contain a thousand goldfish. It depends. We can even load this up to 1,500 heads of goldfish. But we have to remember that there are things to be followed in order for us to grow our fish in that volume. The first thing is, the cycling of the water, it's very important. So we have to cycle the water from here. Actually, the water will go to the first level of filtration bucket, and then it goes to the second level of the filtration bucket, and then it goes to the third level, and then from the third level, we siphon or we extract the water by using the submersible pump right here. This is a filter bucket also that provides good quality of the water that is free from bacteria so our intention here is to develop a natural system filtration system that can produce good bacteria that will benefit our fish this is not just a tank this is a more of a natural fish pond that the cycle of the water running from the bottom of it down here and then over here and I am so happy about what I have just newly discovered the kind of plants that can effectively kill the bacteria and eat the unnecessary waste of the fish and this plant is called photos you will see here I just realized when I saw this from the tank of my friend I realized that this photos can provide us with good ecosystem if we're gonna utilize this one as our filter media this can be grown ordinarily anywhere and they're not that delicate they will grow fast and creep and produce this uh, roots so i would like to demonstrate to you how we're gonna get this one and where we're gonna get this one actually i have here the first bucket that's full of this kind of plants So for you to understand what I'm talking about, we have these three big buckets and the water from here will go through these three buckets and then goes back here to the main tank. And they will pass through this filter media that we utilize and these are the photos plants and the hornwort. Well, I already have tried the hornwort, it's good. But as what I have told you, these photos that we can utilize now are more than good, best than the hydrilla. So we will get some of this at the garden. We have so many at the garden. 
and we will demonstrate to you how we're gonna do this thing so come on let's go over there and let's uh, cut some branches of these photos So guys, these are the things that I'm telling you. These are good creepers and they will just crawl. These are actually vines that they can creep and easily survive in whatever type of temperature. So they will grow even in high temperature and also in very low temperature and even in the water they will grow and they will rapidly multiply. So, I have some good amount of this already. Well, I just planted some few seedlings and it came as a surprise. You, you will see them creeping all over. Ah, yes. This is maybe the purpose why I have this impulse of growing this kind of plant because they can be effectively used as our filter media for our fish. Oh. See that? Plenty of them. So guys, these are the good amount of you know, plant that we can utilize as our filter media we will put all of this right there come on let's go we have to cut this into pieces just like that okay and they will drive this water coming from the fish they will easily develop the roots and the root system will immediately eat the waste of the fish and can create good environment down under you see that i'm so happy about what i have discovered even in our filter buckets in the fish pan we also have this kind of plant they are effectively doing it and they are the best so far that i can recommend for our filter buckets And you guys can see that this filter media or this bucket has this uh, kind of plant. See that one? There are plenty here. And we are actually now utilizing this in all our fish tanks, in all our filter buckets. So I dream of you know growing them. Maybe they can creep right here and this will add more uh, beauty to our fish pond and I'm not anymore using any other media except the roots of this it's good that they can grow their roots downward and you will see that the water is clean water is really clean there are no issues about the algae and even the bacteria and you will see the health of our big Japanese koi. They are freely swimming now and they are enjoying this uh, good tank. Meaning that I can see that the movements of our koi are perfect. There are no issues about gill fukes or fin rods, whatsoever types of disease because of the kind of filter box or filter system that we have here. Thank you guys for watching i hope you will continue to like and share our videos and shout out to the members of the channel thanks a lot for the new subscribers welcome to the family of hobbyists and also for those ones who followed us from the beginning until now thanks a lot 
and I would like to see you in my next video. Only here at Dexter's World!